This is KGW News at 5. Hello, friends. First at 5, we know you're talking about it, and we are tracking that snow in the valley. This is the live look from our sky cam at the Reserve Golf Course in Aloha, and you can see it looks like a, a winter wonderland there with snow sticking to the ground. And here's the view from Drive 8 this evening, checking on road conditions closer to Portland. Looks kind of sloppy. This is along I-84 headed west. Looks like nothing sticking to the roads, just really wet there, so be careful driving out there. We have seen a little snow sticking to the grass near 84 and 205. And wow, what a different story in the West Hills. We'll check in there with Catherine Cook in just a moment. But let's go first to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino in the Weather Center. Matt, this was kind of a tricky little storm. What can we expect as the evening continues? Yeah, they always are in Portland when it comes to snow. This one in particular, because we didn't have a big mass of cold air to work with. We knew we had the moisture coming in and what it really depended on was how hard it was snowing when this system came in and it snowed hard enough into dry air below that that snow evaporated and cooled the air literally brought the snow level down as it came in and I can show you that process on Doppler radar. It is very snowy up in the hills and the driving is a mess. We're getting all kinds of reports from ODOT on that and Catherine Cook will have more on that for you in a minute. This is the Stoller Vineyard Sky Camp sticking snow in Yamhill County, especially on the hills. Still just 31 degrees down at Dayton. This is back to the uh, Sky Camp out at Loa of the Reserve Golf Course and already the snow is melting away a bit. We didn't see that much bare grass even 20 minutes ago. And what's happening is it's warming up because the precipitation rates that I mentioned earlier are backing off and that's allowing the temperature to get back to where it normally has been. It's up to 35 in the Hillsborough Airport reporting only rain at the moment. So here we go. This is the process I'm talking about. Let me loop this through again. When it begins, you're going to see it's all green and it's rain. Here comes the rain. Then it all turned white. It turned to snow because the precipitation was coming down so hard. Now we're seeing the other side of that process. The snow is turning back to rain in many areas. Now, if you have any elevation, the West Hills, especially above 500 feet, the East Hills, Mount Scott, areas like that, um, Bald Peak, Parrot Mountain, out in the coast range, still going to see some snow, but even there, the precipitation is winding down. So this event is already winding down and you can see that process on Doppler radar. It's going to end here in the Portland area in a bit. We've had a couple lightning strikes along the coast. That's uh, really the forecast uh, for tomorrow. We'll talk about that. And this is our latest iteration of our high resolution rapid refresh model HRRR showing no more snow from now through the evening hours. And I like that this has been changing through the evening. So here's what we can expect. The snow is tapering off already. I've been saying five, six o'clock. That's on schedule. Uh, the valley floor a trace to nothing. Some places an inch down the valley, but above 500 feet. We've seen that one to three inches. Now the concern is going to flip to what will the roads be like overnight and in the morning hours and there will be icy areas for the morning commute, especially in those areas that have a couple of inches of snow that'll help to keep it colder. So we'll be tracking those temperatures all night, Laurel, back to you. Thank you, Madam. We mentioned uh, the messy conditions up on the west side, so let's go there now. Catherine Cook is live for us in the West Hills with a look at conditions. Not great for drivers without four wheel drive, Catherine. No, Laurel, unfortunately, all evening we've been seeing cars struggling up the hill here on Westgate and Skyline, uh, but they've been making do a lot of good Samaritans hopping out of their cars too to help cars get pushed up the hills. Uh, like you said, if you don't have four wheel drive or traction devices, uh, approach this area with caution. You can see down the road there are some cars parked there that have been having trouble as well. Some folks getting out to assess the situation. Uh, fortunately, though, we haven't seen any crashes. Not the case uh, over on Skyline earlier this afternoon. Uh, Multnomah County Sheriff's uh, deputies responded to a rollover injury crash there. Uh, a man injured his arm. Uh, fortunately, though, they were able to clear the scene. Skyline there is now open. Something else to watch out for over on Highway 26 uh, at uh, Highway 47. That area is closed on 26 to westbound traffic. A lot of issues up there where the snow is heavier and uh, the conditions are considerably worse. Also, we're uh, hearing tonight that the coastal range there on Highway 26 is also very messy. So you want to avoid that area if possible. Uh, keeping up with our friends at PBOT and ODOT, uh, PBOT telling us this evening that they have all five of their salt spreaders out across town, uh, really hitting higher elevation spots to make sure that uh, folks can get through. 
Uh, also, ODOT has crews out. We've seen several plows uh, trying to help folks out in these tougher, higher elevated spots. Uh, but again, I think the best advice we can give you tonight is enjoy the snow from inside if that's possible. It's most of us have been staying home anyway, which we can assume has made uh, this evening's rush hour a little bit better than it may have in years past. We've seen some of these notorious uh, surprise snowfalls, if you will. Uh, and uh, but fortunately here, it looks like the snow is letting up. Back to you, Laurel. Well, that is a great illustration of a difference a little elevation can make. Thank you so much, Catherine. When we have a forecast like this, it is a good reminder to download the KGW News app. You can also stay up to date on KGW.com and on our social media pages. All right, let's talk about the vaccine now. A new online portal will allow people in the Tri-County area to register for COVID shots if they qualify. We heard from several of you that the site was down more than it was up, but our Pat Doris was able to take a look. Public health leaders shared the new link with reporters just before a Zoom meeting, which was called to announce that they were shutting down a list that gathered names of healthcare professionals who still needed the vaccine. The list had 60,000 names. About 11,000 were able to get appointments, but they may still have to wait weeks, and the rest now have to start all over again. And today's a very um, dark, low day for us to have to announce this discrepancy between supply and demand. The public health leaders say the Portland metro area is not getting nearly enough vaccine, nowhere near its fair share of doses. If I sounded like I was mincing words before, I'll try not to mince them as much. I think one way to solve this um, situation is to allocate more vaccines to the metro area to match the level of population and complexity. Um, the state would have to make that decision. In the meantime, here's a look at the new link. Begin with the website covidvaccine.oregon.gov. On the very first page, look for that blue circle on the bottom right. See it? It's got something white on it. Click on that, and while you really do want to schedule your shot, first you have to convince the computer you are eligible. There will be several questions, but if you qualify, just keep going, and you'll finally end up at a site that will allow you to schedule your COVID shots. And while I was able to get through, and no, I didn't make a real appointment, I got out before that, we have heard from people who've not been able to get through, and the county tells us the site can only handle about 1,000 people at the same time. So if you can, try to be patient. It may take a while for you to get in there. I'm Pat Doris reporting. Southwest Washington now has a mass vaccination site up and running. Hundreds of people are getting vaccinated today at the Clark County Fairgrounds. Tim Gordon reports there was relief for those lucky enough to get in on this first round of appointments. Tuesday morning at 9, the start of what Washington State hopes is the first of many days of mass vaccinations. People in cars lined up and moved in for their turn to be inoculated with the first dose of Pfizer vaccine. So I'm ready. It's everything easy if we left, right? Left? Left? Okay. Stan and Sandy Schoof fall into Phase 1B's 65 and over category, eligible for the vaccine in Washington. It's really working well. You know, it's the first day and uh, the process of getting a hold of it and finding out about it, that's the challenge. Uh, but once we're in here doing it, everybody's doing great. Stan's right. Opening day seems to be going very well, but getting an appointment is the hard part. And all 3,000 doses going out here over the next four days are spoken for. Based on the distribution that the county got to do about 750 vaccines every day Tuesday through Friday, and then we'll kind of take some steps and see where we can go the following weeks. Stephen Serto is Safeway and Albertson's local director of pharmacy operations. He has a team of 10 here administering the vaccine with help from members of the Washington National Guard. All the way in the front there, you'll see the, the up in front there. Okay. Yes, sir. Providing the first dose of protection to some grateful people. It's obviously gratifying to be able to get it. We jumped on it as quick as we, we heard and uh, we'll do what we have to do and be on about our business. Maybe eventually we get to go out to dinner with our whole family, not five people here, five people there. You know, I'm tired of following all these rules. Oh, it's very important. I think overall, if everyone gets it, we'll forget our freedom, you know? Again, they plan to get about 750 doses into arms today and repeat that through Friday. That's for a total of about 3,000 doses this week. Then we'll have to see what the allotment is for next week. In Clark County, Tim Gordon, KGW News. 
As case numbers drop, Governor Brown is changing some counties' risk levels. Tillamook County, for example, is moving from the extreme risk category to low risk. The changes take effect Friday. 25 counties will be labeled extreme risk, including the entire Portland metro region. Two counties will be high, two moderate, and seven low. Governor Brown also announced changes to guidance for indoor activities in extreme risk counties. Starting Friday, six people max will be allowed in indoor facilities over 500 square feet for all activities except dining. For facilities smaller than 500 square feet, the guidance allows for one-on-one -on -one customer experiences like personal training. Risk levels are reassessed every two weeks. Changes will be announced February 9th. Right now, school districts all over Oregon are developing or finalizing plans for limited in-person instruction or hybrid learning. Here's a breakdown of where some area districts are in that process. At a school board meeting Monday night, Tiger Tualatin school officials talked about plans to phase in limited in-person instruction this week. Scott Heron, head of the district's teachers union, says teachers can volunteer for this first phase of limited in-person learning. And he's glad this week many teachers and staff will begin to get their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. That if everything works according to plan, in about three or five weeks, we can get everybody their first shot. As for other districts, Estacada schools started hybrid for kindergartners and first graders this week. Both West Lynn, Wilsonville and Lake Oswego pushed back in-person start dates to late February. That's also when Salem-Kaiser hopes to start hybrid or blended learning. Portland Public plans to start limited in-person instruction at more than a dozen schools next week. Beaverton schools had no comment but said it would give parents an update tomorrow. We have an update on the deadly hit and run spree in southeast Portland yesterday. Police say 77 year old Jean Garrett of Portland died Monday afternoon. Her family released a statement saying she was a cancer survivor, a mother of two and a grandmother of five. She would have turned 78 in 12 days. The driver of the car hit nine others, including cyclists. Witnesses cornered the suspect until police arrived. Teresa Berger was running in Laurelhurst Park when she says the car came speeding towards her. I was thinking, holy shit, that thing's not slowing down. Yeah, and then I was thinking, um, I, I was like, and then I was thinking I need to get out of the way, but it was coming so fast, and I felt kind of foolish to scramble up a dirt embankment with a bunch of bushes and stuff. But um, I thought I better do it to be on the safe side. It was just heartbreaking to see what happened. Portland police say the driver remains in a hospital and his name won't be released until he's booked into jail.